in this brief lecture we will demonstrate an argument which shows entropy can be considered as a state function in the previous lecture we were looking at a carnot refrigerator under heat pump the operational principles of both are very similar are actually one and the same except the objective is different in a refrigerator we want to remove heat from a place for a heat, a heat pump you want to supply heat uh, at a particular place okay so uh, in both refrigerator and a heat pump effectively there is heat that is removed from a lower temperature and transferred to a higher temperature and work is applied we cannot talk in terms of efficiencies here because efficiency will be greater than 1 so we introduce a new term called coefficient of performance and we introduce the corresponding formula and these formula are in general applicable whether it's reversible or irreversible system but for a reversible refrigerator under reversible heat pump we can have a formula based on temperatures of the two reservoirs we are considering but this is in general applicable for any refrigerator and a heat pump so we also demonstrated what is a based on the coefficient of performance what is a reversible refrigerator reversible heat pump and an irreversible refrigerator heat pump and an impossible refrigerator and a heat pump so all these are different facets of second law okay. so our analysis of second law involve analysis of carnot cycle right so here let's say you take a substance which interacts with the system has work interactions and heat interactions but eventually it comes back to the same point right so that's what you mean by a cycle so our analysis of the carnot cycle involve analysis of two isothermal transformation and two adiabatic transformation eventually all this analysis led to this equality right so your qh is the heat that is taken up from the hot reservoir and ql is the heat that is rejected to the cold reservoir and these are the temperatures of the two relevant reservoirs so for a reversible cycle which is a carnot cycle we proved this in the past few lectures so another way of writing this is the following okay so you are just rearranging this and you are introducing two zeros here why are we writing this in this manner because there are four transformation involved in a carnot cycle so two of these cycles involve heat transfer isothermal heat transfer involving qh and ql two of the transformation are adiabatic okay there is no heat transfer here no heat transfer here so you are having zero here and zero here corresponding to the two adiabatic transformation it looks like we have a quantity which can be defined as qh divided by the temperature at the boundary temperature at the boundary is the same within the system and just outside the system that is the temperature of the reservoir there is this quantity which can be summed up across the four parts of the cycle okay so when you sum up across the four parts of the cycle that adds up to zero right so this is also 
q by t, except that q is zero in this case. So I can sum up this quantity q by t across the four parts of the cycle, and that happens to be zero. So let us look at an analogous situation where what we did for internal energy. For a system that is undergoing a cyclical transformation, the sum of changes in internal energy across all segments happens to be zero. It can have work interaction, heat interaction, and so on. It doesn't matter. So if it's a cyclical transformation, this is zero, and we indicate the cyclical transformation with this symbol, that happens to be zero. When this is true, we because this is true, we call u as a state function. Okay, it doesn't matter how you you reached u from one point, you undergo variety of transformation, you come back to the same point. It doesn't matter what kind of work transformation, what kind of heat transformation were involved. Eventually, when you came back to that same point, because this was zero, we called it as a state function. Internal energy is a state function. It just depends upon the property of that particular point and doesn't matter how you came back to that point. Okay, So that is an important uh, feature of this function, in this case, internal energy, we called it a state function because it's a, it has a, this feature is fairly important. If you compare this quantity with this quantity, even though we are not able to interpret what this might be, okay, so this is like Q divided by T, okay, it doesn't really uh, make sense what this might be. However, irrespective of its interpretation, because this mathematical quantity happens to be zero when you sum up across the four segments of this reversible cycle, this property is like a state function, all right? So we are going to denote Q by T using this symbol, this is entropy, okay? So uh, Clausius introduced this uh, argument. So we are going to denote this Q by T with this symbol. So what is Q by T? This is the heat exchanged between the system and the reservoir with appropriate uh, sign conventions and so on. Because it's a reversible heat exchange, Ti is the temperature at the boundary. So the temperature within the entire system is Ti and temperature of the reservoir is also Ti. So this we are representing by this symbol and we are going to give it a name for now. We are going to call it entrop entropy. We are not going to interpret it any further, but in any case, irrespective of the interpretation, we can say this entropy is a state function. Okay, so why, why do we need to give a special status to such functions? Okay, because under cyclical transformation, this happens to be zero, right? So that means, how did we interpret this internal energy? This is a property of matter, right? So this matter can be specified by pressure and specific volume, okay? So associated with that state of matter is a property called internal energy, right? Likewise, associated with that state of matter specified by pressure and specific volume, we can associate an additional quantity called entropy, okay? So, so this is a very important 
implication. Okay, so here analysis of first law gave rise to a state function called internal energy. Analysis of the second law via Carnot cycle gives rise to an additional state function called entropy. Okay, so this is an, an elementary way of introducing entropy as a state function. This, uh, this figure is from Schengel and Bolas, but this argument I is from a different book, from an introductory physics book by uh, R. Shankar, Fundamentals of Physics by R. Shankar. That's where I got this argument. I When I got this argument, I really liked this argument because it, it's a very simple argument. Um, at a later stage, we will reintroduce entropy using classes, um, inequality, and so on. That becomes more uh, formal, less intuitive. Uh, so I thought it is important for you to go over this argument um, stating that entropy is a state function which we get from the analysis of a Carnot cycle from the perspective of second law. What we would see in the next lecture is classes inequality, uh, which is also another aspect of second law. With this, I will stop here.